I've been through several versions of the script and I didn't like any of them, so you know what, we're just gonna wing it. Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and let's talk about colors. Colors are a pretty important feature of games, as they are in pretty much any visual media. And the more you know about something, the more you can bend it to your will, just ask any villain in any psychological horror ever. So let's talk a bit about some of the basic things you can do with color in Game Maker. First, I'm sure you all already know this, but just to set the record straight, colors and computers are built from three different components. Those are red, green, and blue. Uh, these red, green, and blue color components, color channels, corresponds to the, um, the three types of light detecting cones we have in our eyes. One for red, one for green, one for blue. You can combine differing amounts of red, green, and blue to form all the colors of the rainbow by adding them together. If you were to zoom in where the duck is on your computer screen, you would see instead of a collection of yellow LEDs, you would see a collection of red and green LEDs. And when viewed from sufficiently far away, this can trick your eyes into seeing the color yellow instead of seeing the colors red and green. This is a bit different from how light works in the analog world, where light that is, for example, yellow is a thing that can actually exist and is not just an illusion created by combining different amounts of red and green light. When, for example, sunlight strikes an object containing yellow pigment, all of the wavelengths of light that are not yellow will be absorbed and only yellow will be reflected. Color coming from pigments in the analog world works on a subtractive basis instead of an additive one where you can start out with, let's say, white light and the different colors of pigment will remove light from the equation instead of adding it. But this doesn't have too much bearing on those of us who are making videos that take place on computer screens. So if you want to go deeper down the rabbit hole of color theory and the physics of light, then you can do that on your own. So, back to red, green, and blue. So there are two main ways that color values are represented in computers. The first is a, um, to have a number for each channel represented with a value between 0 and 255. In this case, 0 is no color, 255 is the full amount of color, and 127-ish is about 50%. As you can probably imagine, the reason that the number 255 is special is because it's the largest value that you can store in 8 bits or 1 byte, which is, of course, the um, foundational building block of memory inside a computer. If you combine three of those bytes together, one for red, one for green, one for blue, then you have the full range of 16,777,215 different colors that you can represent in 24-bit color, which is more or less the standard that most, uh, most people are using these days for computer screens. And the other way that you can look at color values is that each uh, color channel has a range of 0 to 1, and 0 is uh, no color, 1 is 100% color, and any number in between is a certain fractional amount of the uh, the full amount of color. Measuring colors and values between 0 and 1 is something that you see a lot of in shaders, reason being that it's easy to treat them as mathematical vectors that way, and do math operations on the color, but uh, that's a subject for another day. One thing that I am not going to talk about today is all of the color models that are out there that are not red, green, and blue. You probably heard of hue, saturation, and value, which is a color model that is uh, more like a color wheel, which is something that you, again, see a lot in artist tools because it's uh, a little bit more similar to the way that human brains think about colors than red, green, and blue. There is CMYK, Chi, Magenta, Yellow, and Black, which is sort of the opposite of uh, red, green, and blue, and it's used a lot in printing. If you're old enough to remember computer printers, which were these big, bulky, unwieldy, and frequently broken machines that you could use to actually take something that was on your computer screen and print it out onto physical paper, um, you probably remember changing the ink and or toner, and ink and toner would come in uh, cartridges of cayenne, magenta, yellow, and black. Other color models include YUV, which was used a lot in the days of analog television broadcasting. I don't know if it still is, and uh, plenty of others, but I'm only going to uh, talk about red, green, blue, and I'm going to probably touch on uh, cayenne, magenta, yellow in this video. So that brings me back to this demo program. So I have on the, on the screen in this demo program a number of ducks and also some white colored rectangles. And I'm going to be doing some, some things to the colors of these ducks. And we're going to be messing with the color in different ways. So if I were to close out of that, let me, uh, let me maximize this code window. Because this is all I'm going to be working out of today. So if I wanted to define a color, uh, so I could say var color is going to be equal to, or if you prefer, uh, you could put a u in there, but six of one half dozen of the other. If you wanted to make color in Game Maker, if you wanted to define a color in Game Maker, there's a few ways you could do it. The easiest is make color, and again, you could you could have or not have a U in there, uh, RGB. And this is a function which would take three arguments, red, green, and blue, and this would take a value of um, between 0 and 255 for red, green, and blue. And this would allow you to just build a, uh, a color value based on those arguments. So if I wanted something like, um, if I were to go with, let's say, a light blue, I could say, um, 
127 on the red, 255 on the green, 255 on the blue. And if I were to uh, to just put that on the screen, uh, let me uh, let me use the regular draw rectangle function instead of the uh, the draw rectangle the draw rectangle color version because that's a little bit um, a little bit of a long line of code. So this would give me a light blue rectangle being drawn at the uh, the end of the row of ducklings on the screen. And also let me. Uh, Draw set color, draw set color with a U, whichever you prefer. Uh, C underscore white. Game Maker will recognize both the American and non-American spellings of the word color. Um, I, I tend to like use both up without even noticing because that's just how long I've been using Game Maker, which is uh, of course a uh, run by a Scottish company, so they spell it with a U. This is going to give us a light blue, a light blue rectangle. Okay. Uh, there's also, if you wanted, um, make color. And there I go typing the U um, somewhat uh, involuntarily. Make color HSV. So you can use HSV to define your colors if you uh, maybe if you're more of an artist and you prefer the color wheel um, theory of colors to red, green, and blue. Most of the time, in most artist tools that I've seen at least, if you were to define a color in HSV, you would have uh, hue being a value between 0 and 360, as in like degrees on a circle. and uh, saturation and value would be probably a percent, so zero to 100%. Game Maker being Game Maker, of course, means that we are not going to do this for reasons unknown, and we're instead going to define hue uh, also as a value between zero to 255, saturation and value also from zero to 255. So, I don't know, it's just Game Maker things, don't ask. If you were to use a color wheel, I believe that um, if red was like the starting point of the circle at zero degrees, uh, light blue would be somewhere a little bit more than halfway around, so maybe about 200 degrees. And that would be about 200 degrees from um, zero to 360, or uh, from zero to 255, that would be like 135-ish. Uh, let's go with saturation. Let's go with uh, full saturation, so that's going to be 255. And let's go with maybe uh, a little bit on the dark side, maybe like two, 240. For, uh, for value, so it's going to be a little bit uh, darker than it um, will be at full brightness. And if we were to run the game again, we would see that we have a, a slightly darker light blue that's actually closer than I thought I was going to get just from eyeballing it, so I guess that's nice. If you wanted to uh, go the other way, and if you wanted to extract individual red, green, and blue values from a color, uh, there are a handful of functions, um, color, again, with or without the U, color get red, color get green, and color get blue. There's also, as you probably saw in that, uh, in that code help dialog, uh, color get hue, color get saturation, and color get value, and this will allow you to, um, if you have a color value already, and if you want to get the amount of red, green, and blue from it, uh, you could use these functions to get that value. Or I guess since one of those uh, values is literally just called value, maybe I should say instead, it, uh, these functions will allow you to get the certain um, channels of the color if you're in the red, green, and blue color model, or the, uh, the properties of the color if you're in HSV. All right, that's probably the end of talking about HSV for me today. I, um, I did make a couple of videos last summer uh, last June or July on uh, writing shaders to modify hue, saturation, and value in, in shaders in Game Maker. And if you want to see those, uh, links in all the usual places. If you ever wondered exactly what color values in Game Maker are represented by, uh, you might try to do something like draw um, text. Uh, let's draw the text on the screen at, I don't know, uh, maybe 100. Uh, 700 would be about at the bottom of the screen under the second row of ducks. And the string can be just that value. I really should be casting that to a string, but Game Maker will um, uh, automatically cast numbers to strings if you try to draw them like that. Uh, you're going to see that the um, you're going to see that the exact uh, numerical value that this uh, variable color contains is going to be sixteen million seven hundred seventy-seven thousand and eighty-seven. And if you're a particularly good guesser, or maybe if you uh, you do a little bit of fiddling around with these numbers. Or maybe if you uh, just ask somebody or just listen to what I'm going to say in the next five minutes because I'm going to explain it. Uh, you might guess that this value is 
um, each of the uh, each of the bytes of each of the color channels is sort of mushed together into a single value. Perhaps another clue as to what's going on is that the color white, so 255, 255, 255, it's going to be 16,777,215, which is suspiciously similar to the uh, to the eight-digit number that I spouted out at the beginning of the video. Don't worry about memorizing this number. It's not a number that you are really going to stand to greatly benefit from from memorizing it, unless you're just a weirdo like me, or if you just see it enough times that it just becomes embedded in your brain. Like uh, maybe Planck's constant if you've maybe watched Stranger Things a few too many times. Anyway, in Game Maker color codes, uh, this is again just a number which is composed of three bytes, which is the um, the red, green, and blue color channels sort of mushed onto each other. Um, in this case, red is going to be the um, the smallest byte, so it's going to be the, the byte of least significance. Uh, green is going to be the byte in the middle, and blue is going to be the byte of greatest significance. So if you were to like write it out, if you were to write out that integer, it would look something like this. And you can um, you can actually re-implement make color RGB as well as color get red and green and uh, blue pretty easily. Not that you'd ever want to by uh, by doing some perhaps um, some bitwise operations to um, extract each of the ind individual bytes in a in a color value. If you were so inclined, you could also skip the make color RGB function and you could use a color literal. Uh, so if you were to type the pound sign followed by what was I on yellow. Um, FF uh, 255 on the red, 255 on the green, and zero on the blue. Uh, you could use this. This would give you yellow, as we had before. Uh, there's also the uh, the other like mathematical hex notation that you could use, but since Game Maker added the the hex literal uh, notation to Game Maker for colors, and I want to say 2022.3 or 2022.2, uh, there's really no reason to use the uh, the hex literal like this for colors, uh, you have to reverse the byte order for that because, like, byte order reasons, and nobody has time for dealing with that right now. So, um, I'm not going to encourage anyone to actually do that anymore now that we have the hex literal. So, now let's talk about things you can do with colors. So, a common thing that you might want to do in games is tint a sprite. So, if you have a sprite such as this duck, um, you might remember I have two of them. I have the, the regular colorized original version and also like a black and white grayscale version. Um, if you wanted to colorize a sprite in Game Maker, you can, uh, you can do that in a few ways. Uh, there's a couple color related draw sprite functions, for example, draw sprite extended, and this will allow you to pass in a blending color to the sprite. And if I were to, let's go with, um, let's just go with red for now. I'm going to, uh, tint the sprite to red. Uh, I'm going to tint both the uh, the colorized and the black and white version of the sprite to red like this, uh, 25500, and there's going to be um, some differences. And then I'm going to talk about another way of colorizing a sprite that you might also want to do on occasion, but it's um, maybe a little bit less intuitive. So let's uh, let's first tint this sprite red, right? So uh, this is red. We have the yellow duckling sprite being colorized as red. All right, that's fine. Uh, we have the uh, the white duckling sprite down here being colorized as red. That's also fine. They look not quite the same. They look pretty similar. Uh, the one on the bottom maybe uh, preserves contrast a little bit better than the one on the top. If we were to pick another color to tint the sprite as, uh, let's go with uh, blue this time. Uh, this is going to cause the sprite to look a little bit different. The duckling on the bottom now looks more or less what you'd expect it to if you were to um, if you were to tint the sprite blue. The one on the top looks possessed. And the reason that this happens is that, uh, as I mentioned before, yellow is comprised mostly of red and green uh, color channels if you were to use the red, green, and blue color model. And that means that most of the pixels in the duckling are um, have a lot of red and green in them, but very little blue. And the, uh, the color argument, I'm going to get that off my screen for now because it really does look quite possessed. Uh, the color argument that you pass to the draw sprite extended function, as well as some of the other color blending functions in Game Maker, what this does is it multiplies the color of the, um, like the original pixel color that came from the sprite, and the color that you want to tint it with, so blue. Multiplicative blending is something that you might recognize from programs uh, such as Photoshop or other image editing programs, GIMP, um, Krita, that kind of thing. And blend modes are a whole separate ordeal that I'll be talking about on, on some other day. But to explain this, we're going to need to go back to representing colors as values between 0 and 1. As I said, that kind of thing is useful if you want to do math on the colors, and we are indeed doing math on the colors now. 
So if you have something like a yellow, or a, uh, maybe in this case a golden yellow, which is represented by uh, a lot of red and a lot of green, so high amounts of red and green, but very little blue. And if you were to multiply that color by blue, which is uh, no red, no green, and 100% uh, blue, then you are going to essentially reduce the red and the green of the, uh, the original pixel color to zero. And what you're going to be left with is going to be that small amount of blue that is in every pixel in the Duckling Sprite. And that is why if you were to, um, if you were to blend the Duckling Sprite with red or with green, um, if you were to instead make color, um, make color RBG with a lot of red like this or a lot of, um, a lot of green like this, uh, you would see more or less a, uh, a properly colorized version of the Duckling Sprite. This is green, we haven't done this one yet, I don't think. Uh, because the sprite already has a lot of green and we're just, um, the red and the, and the blue channels are being essentially multiplied by zero. And all that we're left with is this green. And that works if you have a sprite with a lot of, uh, a lot of green in it to begin with, but it doesn't really work if you were to do the same with, uh, for example, blue with a sprite that does not have a lot of blue in it. He looks friendly. Come on, don't tell me you don't think he looks friendly. I actually have a bit of an explanation as to why it looks so creepy. So it looks like it's got like, it's a, it's a dark figure with light, like light-ish anyway, eyes in the middle and they're just sort of staring at you from the darkness. Um, if you zoom in on the original sprite, you will notice that the, uh, like the, there's a little pixel in the eye, which is the lightest part of the whole sprite. Uh, white, as you know, is, uh, contains red, green, and blue. And if you, um, if you cancel out the red and the green, uh, what you're left with is the amount of blue, which is, um, probably at its highest level in the little, in the eye, in the sprite. And as a result, pretty much the rest of the sprite looks black because there's very little blue in it, except for the eyes, which, um, consequently, there's a lot of contrast. It looks like the growing and it looks like, it looks demonic. All right, let's go back to green because that's a little bit less intimidating. So if you wanted to have a sprite be colorized like this with a certain color, um, instead of just blending whatever original colors you had with the, um, with the desired destination color, uh, you might instead want to convert your sprite to grayscale, whether you do that ahead of time, whether you create a separate sprite that's just grayscale, or whether you do that with a shader. Uh, that's, that's up to you. There's a couple of different ways of doing a grayscale with a shader, but shaders are beyond the scope of this video. I will not be touching them today. As much as I, uh, as I do enjoy writing shaders, uh, we will not be doing shaders today. But that's just food for thought. So there's some other things that you uh, you might find that you can't really do with uh, the blending color in Draw Sprite. So if I were to set um, if I were to set the color to zero, um, you would uh, you would find that the sprite is going to be uh, completely masked out. It's going to be a completely black silhouette. There's going to be no like shining eyes, no nothing, and that's because uh, zero, as you know, is the um, is zero 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 on all color channels. And if you multiply any um, source color by zero, you're just going to be stuck with zero. However, if you wanted to do the same thing with another color, for example, white, uh, you would not end up with a white silhouette, you would just end up with the original color. And as, uh, as multiplying anything by zero is zero, uh, multiplying anything by one is gonna be the original value, so that's the, uh, the multiplicative identity. And if you multiply the, uh, the original, uh, the original uh, pixel uh, color values by 100%, you're just going to be left with the same thing that you started with, and that's going to be the uncolorized version. Um, if you wanted to uh, be able to have a have a white silhouette mask or another color like a, a red silhouette mask or anything like that, uh, you would have to do something a little bit different, and you would have to uh, actually uh, merge the uh, the desired color into the spray entirely without just multiplying something by it. So you would want to. Um, You'd want to take the original the original colors and just straight up replace them with the uh, with the desired destination color. And uh, of all of all things, the simplest way to do that in Game Maker actually involves this funny little function that's um, GPU set fog. Uh, this is going to take a few arguments. GPU set fog is, believe it or not, one of the holdovers from the very very old uh, 3D capabilities of Game Maker. Uh, this would be something that you would use to do pixel fog effects in the, uh, the olden days of, of D3D Game Maker, but uh, nowadays if you wanted to do that, you would write your own shader because it is infinitely more flexible, but GPU set fog does remain as part of Game Maker, and a lot of people do actually like to use it for uh, tinting sprites um, just to a color, flashing sprites to a color. 
So we can set the uh, GPU set fog enable argument to not false but true because we want to turn it on. Uh, the color can be the color that we want. Start can be, let's just say, um, zero, and end can also be, um, let's just say, zero. And then when we're done with that, we can say GPU set fog um, false. Uh, still needs the rest of the arguments. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna have those be the. Um, the other arguments that we had, and we're going to turn it off by saying GPU set fog false, and then everything else won't really be a. Uh, be shown in the result of anything that's drawn. So if I were to run this code, I'm going to do it to both these, uh, both the regular duck up at the top and the grayscale duck on the bottom. Then we would have a white silhouette, and this works because uh, GPU set fog is. Um, it blends color somewhat differently than just the blending color that you would pass as an argument to the draw sprite extended function. And if you wanted to now, for example, blend the sprite to red, uh, we are going to have a red silhouette on the um, on the rightmost column. So that is the uh, duck that is drawn with GPU set fog instead of GPU uh, instead of draw sprite extended with the color. Um, GPU set fog you can think of as a, a fancy lerp function with colors. Uh, there's actually more that it does because you can have like attenuation values and you can have um, like you can blend stuff part way to a color uh, using the uh, the start and end arguments. But if you're working with 2D Game Maker, that is most likely more trouble than it's worth, and I'm not going to be getting into it today. Again, the important part is that GPU set fog will act as a linear interpolation when it comes to color. It will um, attenuate colors to a um, to a final value. As long as the thing that is being drawn is farther away than the uh, the end value of the, uh, the the last argument to the GPU set fog uh, function, and if you set that to zero, then that's going to be everything that's drawn. And this will work for any color you can imagine. It will draw a silhouette of this duckling for any color you can imagine. If I were to, uh, if I wanted to have a bit of a an RGB PC gamer um, strobe aesthetic, I could say var color is going to be make color uh, HSV. Uh, hue can be, let's say, something based on time, current time divided by um, 1,000 because it's in milliseconds multiplied by uh, 255, uh, saturation of 255 and a value of 255. Uh, this is going to cycle through the, uh, the hue spectrum, and this is going to give us a, a very RGB PC gamer aesthetic. That's a little bit, a little bit fast. This also needs to be... Um, uh, Ma 255, so that when it when it hits the end, it cycles back to the beginning. And let's uh, let's slow it down a little bit. All right, now we have a nice RGB PC gamer aesthetic. So this kind of thing is commonly used in games for something like a hit flash. So if your uh, your player or some enemy takes damage and you want them to flash red, or if you want them to flash white, or something like that, uh, you could use uh, GPU fog to to do a uh, to temporarily tint the player's sprite to red or to whatever other color you want. The uh, the color value being drawn at the bottom of the screen is going absolutely haywire right now as, as the uh, the game cycles automatically through the, the hue spectrum. But that's going to be all I do with colors today. In the future, I want to, uh, to cover a few topics to do with, uh, for example, blending, color blending, uh, blend modes, additive color, multiplicative color, that kind of thing. And I also want to make some videos on um, shader effects, on things that you can do with colors that don't involve 3D, because most of the shader videos that I've done in the past have involved 3D. And uh, 3D is fun and all, but uh, there is uh, there's also a lot of 2D effects that you can do with shaders that um, that I think are a lot of fun that I also want to make videos on. There are a lot of image processing effects. Uh, there are some things, uh, again, blend modes. There are some blend modes built into Game Maker, but there are some uh, blend modes that you might find in something like Photoshop that you actually need to do in a shader because they're a little bit more like math, mathematically involved. Um, uh, some other image processing effects are grayscale, uh, sapia. Sapia is actually really similar to what we have with the uh, the grayscale duckling being tinted here. Um, it's just you convert the sprite to grayscale and then you you colorize it. Sapia itself is a sort of orangey-brown tint that you can apply to a grayscale image to, to make it look a little bit like burned in, like a, an old photograph or something like that. You can also do the same thing with other colors um, if you wanted to. And there's, uh, there's all kinds of other visual effects you can do with shaders. Anyway, that's going to be it for me for today. I hope I can get this video edited in a reasonable amount of time, uh, because I know I'm going to be doing a lot of like diagrams and stuff on the screen in the video, and that always takes a little bit of a, a while. 
Assuming I can, I try to post about two game dev videos a week, one tutorial tutorial like this, and one let's make a game, which is currently a bullet hell. So if you're interested in anything like that, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, look for links to that in all the usual places. You could see some fun things like your name in the credits, or uh, once a month I post a preview of my future plans. For the record, color theory stuff like this has been on my future plans post since like months ago, and I'm only finally getting around to it now because other stuff kept coming up and I kept like deciding that I didn't like the script that I had for this video. But now it's finally done. If you want the code for this project, there is admittedly not much of it today, but uh, look for the GitHub repository down in the description of this video. Otherwise, I hope you found this useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Army Armbuster, DJ Gibbles, Edward Holt, Game Maker, Gunnar Clovis, Kiexi, Posho, Syndra Larson, Square Crow, Then Nothing Happened, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits, or hear yourself shouted out at the end like this, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.